got another dash I got to do. This here is a C10. Got it shipped to me from another subscriber. His name is Larry. I haven't really opened it up. I just tore a side off of it just to see how it looked. I'm finna go ahead and set it up on the stand and open it up for you. We're gonna look at it together. This is what the back side look like. Don't look too good. He left me a note here. He said I put a piece of color of I wanted it painted. It's kind of a carbon fiber color or gunmetal. Do what you can. There's two small speakers on each side, one in the middle. I see one speaker opening. This one here. And I guess this used to be the middle speaker that is covered up. But I'm not sure. On this side, I don't see no opening for a speaker. Just this little opening here. I know this the vent and this the vent. But I'm not sure on that one now. I'm gonna have to call him and find out. But he also said he wanted matte clear, just like I did the blue square body box shaving. But this the carbon fiber. He wanted, I guess, this gray here, somewhat. Gunmetal. Let me turn it over on the front side. Use the screws here. Let me turn it over on the front side for you. All right, this the front side. I don't know. It looked like somebody put this top pad on there. Because it don't look factory. Might be, I don't know. I ain't too familiar with C10s. But he carbon fiber with this here. I guess I'm going to take this off. But it like they done took all the padding that was on here, took it off. And put this pad here on, on top of it. But we gonna take care of it though. I'm gonna have to call them and find out about these speakers first though. Because I just see one opening. I guess the middle one was covered up. But I don't see an opening for this side, so. I'm not sure where to put it at. Unless it's lined up with this one here. But I'm gonna call him to find out. Then I'll cut you back on. I figured it out with the good old help of YouTube. I went over there and checked my boy over there at TNT Garage out. He doing a C10 dash. And I checked his first video out and the speaker is actually right here. I thought it was right here somewhere because it got an opening. I don't know what this for. But the speaker is actually right here. But it kind of looked like it curved down right there. And I'm going to have to keep that curve. Whoever put this on, it's going straight. So I'm, I'm not sure if it got clearance in the truck or not. So I'm just going to have to go with what I know. But y'all go check TNT garage out this the front of it here he got this piece here wrapped in carbon fiber but the deal is he just got one air vent cover so I don't really know what I'm going to do about that I don't know if I'm going to put some mesh on it or what I know I'm going to put some mesh on the grill the speaker openings I got to cut that one out this dad shit got me kind of puzzled you know, sprayway don't get puzzled too much, but this one here got me puzzled because I'm not sure how everything actually fit in the truck because he took all the padding off. Then right here, this ain't the actual shape because it's supposed to be bent down somewhat right there. Then if you look at the back side of it, This come over a lot further than what it's actually supposed to be. Because this way it should be like this here. 
So I'm gonna have to cut this off here and try to guess it, I guess. But I'm finna go to Home Depot and get me some wood, then I'll be done thought of something by the time I get back. I had came to the yard to check out a few C10 dashes, make sure I got enough clearance, see what I got to work with. The dash still up in this one here. Let me go on the other side. It's quite a few out here. I see the other hole what I was talking about. This actually where the bin I'm at. And right here, it's actually straight where the speaker's supposed to go. I think I should be good on clearance and everything. I just wanted to check it out, make sure before I start on it. I also need this is a different dash here. Yeah. I see some vents over there. I need a vent, so I'll probably go ahead and grab one of them for the air vent cover. See another one over here with the dash in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, one of them vents and head on back home. Back from the yard. I went on to grab two of these vent covers just in case one was brittle and break on me. So I just grabbed two, be on the safe side. But this is what I was talking about when I was at the yard. I thought this here was kind of bent down originally, but it goes straight across. I just gotta, I just gotta clean it up because it actually go this way, come back that way. I got to, I just gotta cut this here off. Then I'll be good. The first thing I'm gonna do, I also went to Lowe's and got me some OSB. I'm gonna use that to cut my speaker openings out where I'm gonna attach my grills to that's the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and cut this here out this opening out here and I'm gonna cut this opening out this one here I already cut out but I might cut it out a little bit larger than what it is so my grill could be the actual size but I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I'm gonna go ahead and get my OSB on my stand Go ahead and mark everything out. Went on to trim this piece here out. I don't know why I kept calling this OSB. I meant MDF. But I trimmed this piece here out. And I had got me some cardboard and made me some templates for my speaker openings, my speaker grills. Because I'm going to use some mesh. Got the one in the middle. And the two on the side. I just cut them the exact size of the original grill. I still got to cut these here out. So it'll fit down up in it. But I'm going to use this to cut my MDF out. Let me go ahead and get that started. I'm MDF up there on the stand. It's half inch in case you didn't know. I got my little pieces of cardboard that I cut out for my speaker grills and I just marked them out on the MDF then I went in I drew a little bit on the inside up on each one of them so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out the inside out 
I made my starter cuts just so I can get the jig so blade in it. The reason why I done this done it like this, I did it with a dremel. So I can get a straight cut. I would have just done it with a drill, but I need a straight cut because I'm thinking about molding my speaker grills in place. In order to mold them, I'm gonna have to have a the exact same size on the inside as the outer. And if I would have did it with a drill, it would have been a circle. So let me go ahead and finish cutting these out with the jigsaw. I had changed my blade up. I used a scroll jigsaw blade. It's a blade like this here. Make scroll cuts. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these two out here. I got all three pieces cut out now. I got the pieces marked so I can know what's the bottom and what's the top. Now I'm gonna take my chamfer bit and I'm gonna put an edge on the top side of both where well, all three pieces. Also, I'm gonna put an edge on the top side of this here. Let me go ahead and do that. Now I can go ahead and rattle this here on all three pieces. All three I'm done. Now it's time to form a mesh grill around this part here. This is gonna be the shape of it. I got my mesh grill right here. It's small diamond shape. You can do it several ways. You can either make your press box and press it together like that. Or you can use your hammer and form it. But I think I'm gonna get me a big clamp and find me a corner of this table here and put the pieces there and then clamp it down. Try to press it together like that. We're gonna see if that works. I'm molding my mesh on now. See, I got two six inch clamps. Got these from Hopper Freight. I think they was $5.99. But I just clamped them down. As you can see, I just transferred it to different spots. Just clamped it down until the mesh molded in place. I just made a scrap piece of wood the same size as this. Let me take it apart. So you So I put that metal piece in and it pressed it in place, made that form. That's it there. I'm gonna trim everything off, then I'll cut you back on, show you how it looks. I didn't even worry about trimming this out yet. I'm just gonna wait till I sit everything and once I paint it, this one I'm gonna put these in. I'll probably trim it out then. And staple them together. It's a leftover piece here. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna go ahead and set these in place. I'm gonna have to widen the hole up some so it'll sit down up in there. I have to cut this one here out. But that's what I'm gonna do now. As you can see on this grid here, I got the diamond shapes running this way and the two side ones, they running that way. Let me go ahead and get that done, then I'll cut you back on. Got them cut out. Let me go ahead and put the frames in. 
right quick and I cut it back on. As you can see, got them in place. I'm going to go ahead and mix up some bundle glass, some fiberglass filler. I'm just going to put some around it, try to hold it in place until I start uh, actually fiberglassing it. See some of this metal back here, I can connect it onto it. I'm going to have it kind of sitting up some though. You can see like right here. I got it sitting up above the pad because I'm going to try to transition my fleece right onto it. I got the frame set now. As you can see on the back side, I just cleared out some of the foam so I have something the fiberglass filler can bind to. Got a little spot here, here, here on the four corners. This on the back side. I'll show you the front side in a minute. And on this over here, I tried to build this area here up because it was the metal, it was cut off, so it wasn't nothing really to support it. But I got it built up with fiberglass filler now. I'm gonna turn it over. So I got some fiberglass filler down in the cracks. See how I got it built up. Take it over here. All right. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go around and try to even out this foam. See, it's not even, so I'm just gonna pull all this up, get it kind of even before I start putting the fleece on, like right here. I also got to put that vent on. I'm going to go ahead and put the vent on. Got everything trimmed off of it. I got all my rough ends, sand it down. I just used sandpaper. Where he had put that foam on some areas that was sticking up. Also trimmed this cardboard that he had on the top of it. I trimmed it back some so it'll be a beveled edge. This new was already trimmed down. But like right here. And along this back side. Shape this up some. Now I think I'm ready for some fleece now. Got my fleece here. And I got some Loctite. I'm going to start in the middle section and work my way to each end. When I'm going to spray this fleece and land it on. I'm going to start right here by spraying my Loctite. I'm going to spray it here and work my way down to this end. I'm going to have to stretch it right here because the fleece, it ain't actually long enough. I got this side sprayed. I still got to wrap my ends around and cut this out and do that. But right here where this van number hole at, I kind of pushed it down in there so I can have enough room to wrap it on the inside. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this side here the same way. Before I finish out doing the front, I had trimmed out the back. I took the excess off of it. Now I'm going to spray the back and overlap the back side. I already overlapped this here where the bend number go. It's somewhat looking like a dash again now. Got everything wrapped with the fleece. I 
I had to piece together this area here because it wouldn't stretch like I wanted it to. So I'm just going to staple it so it won't slide back when I start laying the resin. Also, I'm going to staple around all my frames on my speaker grids. Also, I'm going to staple this here, keep it from lifting up. And a long up in here, keep it from lifting up. Anywhere I feel like it'll lift up when I start laying the resin, I staple it. But I think that's about it. This area here, up and now. And I'm going to step around the speaker frames. And I would up in here, but but I ain't got nothing to staple to. Because it's straight metal there. It's a little foam there, but I don't think it's going to be enough to put no staples in it. I'm just going to use this staple gun here. Got everything stapled that I wanted stapled. All up in here. I also did the top side. You can't see it though. Look at me bend down. Around my speaker frames. I was going to staple around the outer edge of the vents, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to cut this out. Once the uh, first layer of resin dry, I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to set my vents in and fiberglass them in place. This is what I'm going to use for my resin, this bundle resin. Got me some gloves. I'm going to mix them up in an old paint cup with an old paint stir. I've been using for a little other thing. And I'm going to spread it on with a chip brush. It's a two inch chip brush here. Got these from Harbor Freight. Pack of 36. Like I paid $12 for it. But I'm finna go ahead and mix some up. Go ahead and spray. Not spray, but spray some of them. I had to go to this dry once it dry I'm gonna go ahead and cut my vent openings out so I can sit my vents in them then I'll start fiberglassing the first coat of resin I'm gonna dry it up now I'm gonna go ahead and cut my vent openings I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out so I can sit my vents in and I'll start fiberglassing I'm also gonna go ahead and cut my Speaker frames out. I'm going to cut them out. Everything set like I want it. I'm going to cut the speaker frames out. I'm going to go ahead and put some masking tape over the speaker grills just on the middle part. I might also put some around the speaker frames just to keep from cleaning it off once I start fiberglassing it. Took me some fiberglass mat and I had cut some out the shape of the dash pad just at the top. I'm just gonna work with the top first. I'm gonna go back and piece in this part here. But I'm just gonna do the top, then I'll do the sides afterwards. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna fold this back halfway 
put me some resin down. Then I start uh, soaking the mat in resin and dabbing the chip brush. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Let me get set up, I'll cut you back on. Top side fiberglass. Finished up with the fiberglass. I had brought it outside because the sun was out earlier, but it done went in now. But I'm finna go ahead and keep it out here so I can go ahead and sand it down, knock some of these hot spots down. I'm just going to use 80 grit on the DA. I've been knocking it down some, like this front. I gotta fill this with some filler, them low spots. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and fill some of my spots, at least on this top. Then I work my way on down to the bottom. Go ahead and fill this, make this transition smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and fill out this. I'm just gonna fill in all my low spots at the top. Then I'll cut you back on. I'm knocking the filler down with 80 grit on the DA. I gotta clean it up some though. I'm gonna do it by hand. I'm just knocking the filler down so it'll be a lot easier. Sanding. I also gotta clean this up here. Do this by hand also. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and start doing the front part. Before I start trying to get this real smooth, I'm going to go ahead and get my mountain holes looking better than what they is. I just took a drill, drill a bit, and drilled it out a lot wider than what it actually was. That's so, I'm going to take this CPVC and I'm going to cut me some pieces a little bit bigger than what the actual size I need. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, this is what I was talking about. It's going to sit up in the hole somewhat like that but what you want to do you want to sand from here down so I got some 80 grit sandpaper so I'm going to go ahead and sand that the reason why you sanding that so the fiberglass filler has something to burn to I don't know if the camera picking it up but you can see you might see them rough ends there that's what you need you want to take it over here you see the hole the mount hole and you want to make sure it's centered inside the pipe and once it's centered you want to take your clamp I got a clamp somewhere around here but let me go ahead and clamp it and I'll show you what I'm talking about okay as you can see I got a clamp I'm just going to stuff some fiberglass filler all the way around the opening I'm gonna dry it up now. Then yeah, that good too. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off flush with the pad. I'm just gonna use this here. I 
I spread some fill on here, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some 80 grit sandpaper and knock it down some. I don't want to knock it down too much. I still want it sitting up kind of above the surface. I just want to knock it down enough so I can spread the fill on a lot easier. I'll put the fill on. I'm working on this top side now. I want to fiberglass this metal part because it's covered up and it really just broke this piece of down. But this is an aftermarket piece. This ain't the original piece. I'm trying to make sure it's gonna fit right before I start, you know, go any further. I've been cutting this out, trying to get it to go down real smooth. I'm gonna have to build this up some. Also around here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my vent openings out. Let me remove this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fiberglass this part here. Also that part and this part. Pretty much got everything sanded down on the whole dash. What I'm doing now, I'm just doing some touch ups. I done fitted the aftermarket piece here. Let's see if I can get it on now. Pretty much got it like I want it for us to get. Also, drilling out the holes for the where you mount the dash bezel. I know I had a hole here and a hole on this side. I drilled the hole out right here because let me see if I can turn it over for you. This the hole I was talking about. I had drilled it out. I had lined it up this mount bracket here. Because I was guessing that with this for it was open up so you can mount your screw down because you can mount this one down from the vent. But I'm not real sure on this C10 dash has how you bolt it up. I was just guessing. I'm also doing little touch ups here now on the back side, but you probably won't ever see it. I just like to have my corners rounded off smooth. I know it look crazy now, but once I put that prime on it, it'll start taking form. I'm also working on two other dashes over here. They box Chevy dashes. This in here is for Southern Chevy TV. And this in here is for Big Chop. I'm not sure which video I'm going to put out first. It's going to be one of the three. The reason why I'm working on three at a time because like I put some just say I put some fill on this in here then I have to let it dry so keep me from not doing anything I jump on this one and spray some primer and let it dry then I jump on this one just vice versa but I probably have all three I'm ready to uh, paint tomorrow because I just got to sand this back down, shoot some prime on it. Same way with this one over here. Pretty much got everything cleaned on up. I got to go ahead and shape everything up with my hand now. I did all this with the DA. I'm just going to put some sandpaper 
on the block and I'm gonna block the flat areas and like around the curves I'm just gonna do that by hand You gotta set up for primer now. I got it somewhat smooth. It ain't smooth as I want, but smooth enough to shoot my first coat of primer. Let me go ahead and mix it up. I'll cut you back on. what it's looking like after the primer this the following day I had let it sit in the booth overnight but now you can see all the imperfections like this spot there it's quite a few of them I just got to get it real smooth I'm gonna go ahead and fill up all my imperfections with some glaze and put it then I'll go ahead and sand it down some more. Focus. Then I can see my line here. It's not actually straight. Like right here, it drops down. You can see all that once you put the prime on. Get you caught up what I'm doing. I got some glazing put in by Evercoat. I had a few shallow areas where the fiberglass was real thin at, and you could tell because it was bulging out above the surface. So I got me a box cutter and dug it out. It was an air pocket actually. So I dug it out. So I'm gonna put some fill in that with glazing put in it and fill all these areas here up. I had them, I had quite a few of them like here and some pinholes I just dug it out so I could put some glaze and put in it let me go ahead and take care of that then we'll move on to the next step got all them areas taken care of I also went back and sanded them down I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some prime on these spots here since I gotta shoot some prime on this dash here 
I'll go ahead and shoot this. Then I'll go on and block the whole dash. see the imperfections in the pinholes that's if this camera focus for me there you go I'm gonna go ahead and fill all them up with some glaze and put it by bundo just minor imperfections I'm gonna feel with this here like this here Let me go ahead and take care of that, then I'll cut you back on. Glazing putty. Got it all over the place. It's time to start blocking again. But this time we're going to use the Dura block, but we're going to have 180 on it. Just so we can get the 80 grit sand scratches out. All right, let me show you if I can get this camera to zoom in, but not zoom in, but focus on this gray. Let me show you what you need to be looking for. All right, you see the guide coat? It's the blue. That's a low area, low area, low area. Also, this part here low. So I'm gonna have to bring this on down some more, even it out, like here. Low area. Have to bring it down some more. Then you can see the 80 grit sand stretches here. Finish blocking the whole dash. I seen some low spots that I gotta go back and hit with some glaze and put it like this right here where you see the guy coat. It's a low area. This over here is low. It's low here. It's low right here. Right there. Also right here. I had dug this out. It was an air pocket. And right here. There's a free more here now. I'm just gonna go back and hit all this with some glaze and putty. This is what I'm gonna use to, this Evercoat polyester glaze and putty. Go ahead and mix that up. And get it spread it on. Pretty much got it ready for some more primer. I seen two more spots. I just hit it with some bundle glaze and put it. A little small imperfection. I'm about ready to sand that. Once I sand that, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my primer. I'm also gonna prime these speaking mesh grills. I gotta take them down so they won't blow up when I start spraying it. I went on and drilled my hole for the screw. 
I almost forgot about it. shoot some guy cut on it now I had ran out of flat black spray paint I'm just gonna use some satin blue then I go ahead and wet sand this they go to speaker grills I'm not gonna need sand these I'm just gonna spray the bed liner right on top of it once I wet sand this here I'm going to turn it over and go ahead and put the speaker mesh grids in. Got my Dura block, it's a rigid block. I also got some 400 grit sandpaper. I'm finna go ahead and wet sand all this. We're trying to do the same thing what we did when we was blocking it. We gotta remove all the guide coat. Get it smooth for the bed liner material. Just finished up with the wet sanding. I wasn't trying to get it too smooth because I'm putting a texture on it. If I was putting a gloss clear on it, I'd try to get it as smooth as I could. Because you still can see some of the guide coat. Little orange peel, but all this going to be covered up. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. I put my speaker mesh in. I was gonna staple them in, but I decided I'm just gonna mix up some uh, fiberglass filler and just put some fiberglass filler on, probably on each end of it. Because I don't want to staple it and shoot it through here, because I hate to have to do this over. So, to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna do it like that. They set in place now. This is what I'm going to use. I'm just going to use this fiberglass filler here. This bundle glass. Then I'm just going to put some sockets just to weigh it down to keep it in place. Into a dry. We good now with the mesh. I got to secure it down now with the fiberglass filler. I'm about to turn it over and go ahead and wipe it down. Then I'll be ready for the bed liner. I believe I'm ready now. Got it wiped down. I'm going to blow it off right before I start spraying the bed liner. Let me show you the bed liner I'm going to use. It's by Rustolian truck bed coating. Go ahead 
go ahead and get the air hose and blow it off. Then I'll be ready to spray it. Got the bed line applied. I started running out up in here. Then it started shooting in a stream. So you want to be careful when you can start running out. You want to go ahead and put it down. Because it started shooting in the stream. It don't be no fan pattern. Go ahead and let this dry. Then I'm going to shoot my color on. It's going to be a dark gray. Got the base coat taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and put this clear on there now. It's going to be a flat clear. Got it over here mixed up. Look milky. But it goes on glossy, but it flashes off flat.